Melissa Clark joins us now from Canberra. And Melissa, this is not the news Kevin Rudd uh, would have liked waking up to in this week where he's trying to sell his tax reforms. He's really facing this morning the hangover of last week's policy jettisonings uh, rather than uh, the result of this weekend's uh, an uh, announcements to do with the Henry tax review, although a little bit would have fed into the calls that were made for this polling over the weekend. Most of the reaction can probably be attributed to Labor stepping away from a number of its policies, in particular emissions trading, but also breaking promises when it comes to things like childcare and uh, extra reviews into the building the education revolution and the problems that scheme has faced. So uh, Kevin Rudd, personally, it seems, is, is to be at least largely responsible for this big dip that the ALP is experiencing. Uh, the coalition will be over the moon. They might even be having a champagne breakfast this morning because their two-party preferred vote has hit 51%. This is the highest it's been since uh, mid-2006. Mid uh, they finally edged above Labor in that mark, which is, and the two-party preferred vote is really the one that determines who makes government if there were an election at that time. But interestingly, if you look at the primary votes as well, uh, they, uh, the ALPs had a, an 8% drop, but the, the coalition has only picked up 3% of that. The other 5% of people who have taken their vote away from the ALP uh, say they would vote for someone else altogether, not the two major parties. So although, uh, although Labor is losing a lot of votes, the Liberals and the Nationals aren't necessarily the ones picking it up. And that's the one bit of positive news for Kevin Rudd. And oh, oh, there's been method in Kevin Rudd's madness, so to speak, over the last couple of weeks as he's cleared the decks of all these unpopular policies. He knew he would have known something like this was, was coming and he would argue now that there's plenty of time for the government to fight back. Without a doubt. Well, what he's done is get this pain uh, over and done with early. Clearly they needed to back away from some of their promises. Uh, emissions trading was an ongoing problem for them. Uh, but if they decided to announce a backing away from it later on, closer to an election, uh, the government would have less time to climb back the, the hit they would inevitably take on that one. Whereas by getting it out of the way early, when they've now had uh, the response to the Henry Tax Review for some distraction, we'll have the budget next week, and then there's still plenty of time, perhaps a few months after that, before the election, where they can try and make up that ground. But nonetheless, an 11-point hit to the, the satisfaction rating in the Prime Minister is very significant. That's not something that they'll be able to turn around overnight. It won't be a one-poll blip. That will take some serious work. And it's done some serious damage to their credibility on the issue of climate change in particular. If you look at the figures where the people polled were asked on who they think is best able to handle the policy when it comes to climate change, uh, over the past few years, Labor has had a clear lead. The numbers have bounced around a bit, but Labor has always been seen as the party that can handle climate change. The latest poll taken at the weekend now shows that it's pretty much even Stevens across Labor, the Coalition and the others, which is pretty much the Greens. So the public really isn't sure who to turn to when it comes to the matter of climate change. And it's not just Tony Abbott, the Prime Minister, is duking it out with this morning. He's at war with the heads of the world's biggest mining companies as a result of that super profits tax. And that might even be a more formidable opponent when you have the heads of Rio Tinto and BHP and Extrata coming out and saying uh, publicly that uh, this mining tax that's being proposed, the, the resource super profits tax, uh, will affect their ability to invest in Australia and that it might damage Australia's uh, ability to compete internationally in what is a very competitive resources market. Now, it's one thing for Kevin Rudd to try and fight Tony Abbott, but to take it up to the miners is always a hard ask. And the fact that they've come out and spoken publicly says volumes. Well, these companies usually do their most effective lobbying behind the scenes, but right off the mark they've come out publicly to uh, announce their concerns with this. And it seems the market agrees with the mining companies as opposed to the federal government because their stocks have taken a hit on the share market. BHP and Rio have both had uh, roughly 4% drops in their market value uh, over the last 24 hours, and other companies like MacArthur Coal, which is a, a subject of a possible takeover, has had an even bigger hit as there's now concerns over whether or not that will go ahead. So, uh, coal, so the, the ALP, not only bad day in the polls, but they've got a fight on their hands uh, from the mining front too.